But is Will, uh, if, is Will on the call? Yeah, Willem's on the call, so I can't. I'm, I'm recalling a conversation with a person who is not here. <laughs> You're muted, by the way, King. So are we talking about the summer program? Sorry, I'm a little late. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was just recalling that that came up initially in an auger hackathon with Asia Pacific um, and a design discussion with Willem. And, uh, with Willem not here, I, I have less. I yes, needed. and and I was thinking if we are gonna um, let this to be become one of the project ideas, will this, um, um, I, because I think this may sh uh, have to involve in uh, outreach to other companies or communities who mm -hmm. maintain the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the idea that Willem had was that any company that deployed Augur in this case would have a way of sort of importing or including the list of employees and identifying the different platform accounts that they used and then using that to reconcile um, contributions from their own employees and perhaps have maps to, I don't know if the use of non-company emails is an issue for you. It is for a lot of uh, uh, North American and European firms where individuals use their own email to make corporate open source contributions. I don't know if you have that problem to the same extent. Um, but yeah, the idea would be that any company would be able to import their list uh, as a reference point. Can I ask you <clears throat> just a process question here? So we obviously we've been accepted as an organization. So thank you so much for <laughs> for doing that. I that yeah. was awesome. So now do we do we come up with a list of ideas? Is that what we do? So in Google Summer of Code, right? You're accepted as an organization. In kind of in parallel, you come up with a list of potential project ideas that people can express interest, ex, sorry, it, that people can express interest in to participate on. So, right. so for Google Summer of Code, we would come up with maybe five different project ideas and then potential applicants would say, I'm interested in this project. And so I'd like to participate in the chaos project <clears throat> in line with this very specific component of the chaos project. So is that how it works here? And, and there are some projects in Google Summer of Code too, right? That people express no interest in, and that's, that's okay too. Yeah, I think that's what we should do next uh, to come up with some project ideas. And um, when I say that, when I see that uh, some communities uh, on the list who have already published their project ideas that they got quite a lot, because this will also decide, uh, depends on whether students will express interest to those ideas. So I think we can gotcha. come up as much as we, we need or we- Okay, that sounds good. And then Shoya, do you know with the project ideas do we also uh, get mentors to go with the project ideas? So again, with Google yes. Summer of Code, like we could have an idea, but we need to have people that are willing to help applicants. Yes. Okay. Yes, each idea should have a mentor. Okay. Um, okay. So it sounds a lot like Google Summer of Code, actually, just from a process yes. perspective. Okay, cool. Um, do So Sean, were you talking about project ideas? Yeah, I was just mentioning that um, Willem and I spent actually a couple hours with the hackathon group for Asia Pacific when we had that talking about uh, some design ideas for okay. how to manage contributors really centered more on a corporate inner source perspective where the list mm -hmm. of employees could be a starting point um, gotcha. and a resolution point. And it, it was a really good discussion. And um, that was where he mentioned this program first. And I don't know if he's still interested in that or if so. So that was one idea. And I think Willem would be in, you know, Willem and I could mentor that project if, if uh, he's still interested in that. Well, so he just joined. Idea. He just oh. joined. Excellent. 
Hi, Willem. Hi, Will. Okay. Um, I put a time oh, time thank you. timeline for. Gotcha. Thank you. So okay. So so the communities are accepted, and so really right now we're we're a little bit late in the process of posting the ideas, right? Because. Okay, did we met? No, we met. No, we're okay. We're the okay. Okay. We're the second list of. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Okay. I see, I see, I see. So the student application period starts in May. Well, and before yeah. you joined, I was just uh, reflecting on the contributor design and centering that on a corporate employee list um, for reconciliation that, that we discussed during the hackathon. And if we wanted to include that as one of the ideas for chaos, mm -hmm. if you were still interested in that. Uh, sure, uh, I think I can share some ideas uh, about that. And uh, uh, from my understanding, uh, uh, we just list the, the, the ideas and uh, then right. the it will uh, come just like the Google Sum of Code. Yes, well, I guess that's what Dajoy was explaining. Is there, do you have a sense of how many ideas we should have? Is there a with this no, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think they have the number. Some organization, uh, so, some some community, they have uh, ten project, uh, ten task uh, accepted, and some just one or two. Okay. And so there's, if there's more tasks, there's a chance that more will be accepted, but there's also a chance that two of ten will be accepted. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how would how would mentorship work? I think it would be helpful. It, I would expect if there would be someone in China who would participate in the mentoring process. Um, or or is it the or would it be like just anybody from the chaos community is permitted to mentor? Yeah, I I think it, it's just based on the uh, community side and uh, uh, oh. Uh, there's uh, limitations. One uh, mentor can only uh, mentor three uh, project. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, I, I, I'm not sure uh, if the Google uh, sum of code uh, task are all uh, uh, taken or so. So uh, if there's uh, some uh, task with, uh, which was not uh, not take a, a so maybe we can bring it to the uh, summer of 2021. 20, yeah, I, I think for the most, I think most of them, at least on the auger side, can be refactored to, um, in, you know, to be different perspectives. So, for example, there's a contributor task in auger that could be re, re described around the design ideas that we discussed. Uh, so it would be the same type of task, but really with a very different approach. I put all the existing Google Summer of Code ideas mm -hmm. in the minutes. So this yeah. is just the, the headline of every idea that we have. But, Some of them uh, are low. Yeah, go ahead, Will. Uh, but uh, we need to make sure if if some uh, students already take uh, it as a... No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I was just giving you a general idea of what we yeah. have okay. so for, for this. Yeah, like for example, in the area of the risk working group and uh, dependency analysis, I think there is an, we could probably hire 10 professional developers full time and uh, still not have that problem completely solved. So okay. <laughs> um, so there's, there's some like that, that, that there's just so much work um, and, and I think identity resolution, you know, it's, rema remains a challenge. And I think there are many approaches that can be tried both with Grimoire Lab and Augur. I think we both mm -hmm. have contributor focused tasks there. Um, that again, the, the problem space is so large that projects can be defined for people around them to, mm -hmm. to 
you know, I don't want to say infinitely, but certainly for a large staff of uh -huh. students. Uh, but but there's another uh, things. Uh, I uh, last year I I have a task that uh, is look like uh, undergraduate students uh, take participate, but uh, it turns out um, she doesn't uh, make it. And so 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 for my understanding, the the task won't be too complicated if uh, it's a uh, 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 post student they may be more experienced but for the undergraduate students uh, they just need an uh, uh, example or maybe some reference to help them to uh, get fully understand of the uh, how to uh, write program mm -hmm. and <laughs> so, yeah. so, so it really depends on the task uh, difficulty. And uh, if we can work closely with uh, some uh, uh, research lab, uh, that could be uh, more easily to mm -hmm. um, get them involved and uh, they may uh, stay a bit longer uh, because mm -hmm. their research is related to this project. And uh, I, I, I saw there was uh, some uh, successful uh, story um, uh, several uh, uh, post uh, uh, a graduate student to get the RPC committer uh, just because of the uh, this kind of program and they still uh, stick around uh, in the community and uh, uh, I, I I guess we did need you mean to... did you mean academic labs or corporate labs uh, academic lab okay. That's what I thought you said, but I wasn't positive. So Willem, <clears throat> to try to understand skill set for Google Summer of Code, that's a concern that we had as well, right? That we would have a task and the people who were applying couldn't actually accomplish the task. Uh, uh -huh. Very, very real concern. So prior to anybody applying through the Google page. So there's an official Google application page where the students express interest. Within the chaos project, we also ask them to complete a series of micro tasks for uh -huh. each for each of the potential ideas. And so I put a link in there. It's it is to GitHub. Um, but we ask essentially the students to complete these micro tasks in association with the idea they're interested in. And the tasks are kind of tailored to that particular idea. And then they have to submit a proposal to us, mm -hmm. like to our, our repository that demonstrates their interest and demonstrates their skills on that particular test. So it might help a little bit in that regard if you're concerned yeah. that some students might not be and I, equipped. And I And, and I, I do agree with the academic lab piece. I mean, the, the, st the students who participated with Augur last summer, except for five out of the six have made contributions in the last six weeks. So they do stick around if there's like a social organization that they're part of um, and more people than the mentor that they can talk to. Like I've, I've had that experience as well. Well, and I'm looking at <clears throat> Daniel here. I mean, Baturgia hired Venu, who yeah. was a Google Summer of Code student, um, oh, very, uh, maybe yeah. two or three years ago, something something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that my impression worked yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, impre my impression is Baturgia has the a kind of a culture of an academic lab where there is a lot of that, you know, there, you write code, but you're also doing a lot of thinking about what's next and um, yeah, I would say it's, it's their equivalent sorts of experiences from what I understand. And you have people who continue to contribute well after the summer of code is over. So I think it's, it's completely fair, Willem or, or King, to think about any applicant that, that would participate in the program as hopefully sticking around, also serving as a, you know, a level of interest that, that your organization may have and continuing to work with this person. I think that's completely fine. I mean, a lot of these students are, are hoping to use these programs to get themselves in front of people to demonstrate mm -hmm. their skills. So whether it's an open source community or whether it's a, an, a corporation, 
I mean, the students are doing the same. So I think it's, it's okay to try to find that, um, to build that relationship with the applicants in ways that can be beneficial for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is why I'm quite interested about this program. <laughs> so how do you recommend <laughs> Kelsey yes. to participate? Yes, I totally yeah. agree. I think that's completely fair. Um, I, I, have a, I have kind of what the process dorky question is. So what do we do to make our list available for this program? Oh, oh uh, I, I, I'm I in the uh, community of the uh, summer 2021 and uh, uh -huh. There's a, a backend system they just uh, put it online. So I will share the information with you. Um, uh, basically, uh, uh, if we have a wiki or, or some uh, documentation uh, uh, place uh, um, mm -hmm. to, 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 to hold the list uh, of ideas, and then we can uh, put it into the system. And uh, I'd be happy to, to help you with that. And uh, it, uh, once the uh, system online, I will share the link so you can help okay. yourself. I, I have an idea then. We have the project list from Google Summer of Code. Why don't we make a copy of that um, for this program and then edit it to uh, you know, adapt, remove, add projects accordingly um and uh do you does somebody have that link it's like in the governance repo or i can't remember what repo it's in we have but uh, i have it i'll get it a second. yeah i think if we if uh maybe willem or king or joya took a look at it and if there's any information that needs to be provided about the project that we don't provide um that would be good to know that we need to also add certain pieces of metadata to each project. Like I, I don't expect any of them to stay exactly the same because as Willem said, we don't know how many of them are gonna be accepted by Google yet. But I, I think in some cases, there's a lot of different work that can be done and, and just, you know, oh, different okay, chunks wait. of the same kind of problem can be carved out. So, so it's look like uh, uh, we can give a uh, student uh, uh, a choice uh, because they need to uh, make a proposal so so we can get them to a different direction mm -hmm. as to, to to avoid the uh, uh, conflict uh, so so we just need to work uh, avoid uh, people are doing the same thing uh, in two different uh, programs yeah, but I think I think we would copy these ideas and call it like whatever this program is ideas. And then if they're like if micro are like the micro tasks and questions are like a good approach, but I don't know if that's what students expect. Uh, but I, I think the micro task uh, is quite in, uh, 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 essential because mm -hmm. they need to get know about the project and uh, Right. Uh, to demonstrate okay. the uh, scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And lots of times the micro micro tasks are just things like, you know, install Augur, install Grimoire Lab, whatever the appropriate idea is, demonstrate that you can use these particular features of the software. Like, we just need to show that you can even mm -hmm. get to the starting point before we start yeah. asking you to do things. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Would it, would it make sense? So Willem, do you think, let me back up. So the way that we do Google Summer of Code is we obviously have our own chaos repository to kind of um, promote ideas, our own GitHub repository to promote ideas and also to kind of capture applicant interest. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Google Summer of Code webpage that is kind of, that kind of serves as the official like tracking tracking students with uh, mm -hmm. with Google, right? So we, we kind of used two different pieces yeah. of technology to get this done. Yeah. Um, do, do you think it makes sense in this scenario to set up a Gitty repository where we provide uh, students with, here's our list of ideas, here's where we could track your interest in 
a particular project, but the students then when they officially apply still have to go through the official channel to make the application. But we, we use the repository as a way to kind of filter preliminary interest of students. Uh, I, I think most of the interest uh, students, uh, they, they, they probably uh, have no trouble to access the uh, uh, GitHub. And uh, uh, if we want them to uh, stay around the community, it could be a, a, a one place to, to, right. to reduce the okay. uh, okay. uh, confusion. Yes, okay. actually, most students in China are more accustomed to GitHub. Great. OK, so maybe what we can propose is on, on GitHub right now, we have two markdown files in the governance document that are associated with Google Summer of Code. One of the markdown files is Google Summer of Code ideas, right? It's just It just lists all of the ideas and the kind of a pretty long description of what each one of those ideas is. We could simply make a new markdown file for this program, which is, to Sean's point, just copying the Google Summer of Code ideas over, but modifying it so that it's tailored to this program. Does that make sense to start? And then we could follow, we could then create a second markdown page, which is this program. What is this program's name? So I can <laughs> officially use the name. <laughs> uh, summer 2021. All right, so we can make an official summer 21, 2021 um, interest page where students can then kind of submit a proposal that we can review to kind of determine whether or not, I mean, we can basically just follow the same process that we have for Google Summer of Code. It works very well mm -hmm. in our regard. Great. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll put that on just an action item for me. And then I'll, in the um, PR, I'll ping or tag Shoya and Willem, maybe both of you, just so you know that this is happening. Is that okay? All right, cool. And then um, it looks like Yash has a chat about translations that he'd like to talk about. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Yash. Hello. So if you'll notice that the markdown files in the translations repository, they are organized by the working groups. We have not classified them according to their focus areas. Uh, that is the general pattern which is followed in each working group repository as of now. So I was hoping maybe we could, uh, you know, organize those markdown files. Is there a standard way of, of doing language translation? So like my local computing language, if there's a translation available in markdown, that, that's what I see. I was actually hoping that uh, like we have two translations, one in Chinese and Spanish, and then right. we have the five repositories uh -huh. to, uh, which have the translated markdown files. Okay. Um, I had submitted a sample PR to restructure it. Mm -hmm. um, I put it down in the chat box right now. Oh, oh so okay. Like, I missed. I saw your. I saw your entry. I didn't see your uh, markdown. Okay. So. It was approved by Matt, and I guess we could do the same for other repositories also. So the idea would be to 
would there just be a translations folder in each repository that would mirror the English version? No, like we already have the translations repository to have the translated files. Right. And then we have the Chinese translations. There mm -hmm. I was hoping like I restructured the working group common folder. I'll just put it down. So I guess we could have the same structure for all the working group folders. So it's just adding, Sean, it's just adding kind of a, the folder structure that mirrors the focus groups or the focus areas, I should say. Yes. So so right, right now it That's was just it like yeah. yeah, every every metric was just kind of tossed into right the, the I, top yeah. level folder. So it's just yeah. it's more it's just mirroring the structure that we already have. Okay. And I was yeah, I think my question was if GitHub did anything that let us if, if GitHub had a service or something like you know on I used to write Java, we'd have language translation files that would just compile it in whatever your local computer said your language was. And or and you'd see the, the Chinese version of the website if your default setting on your computer was Chinese. I, I don't know if GitHub offers anything like that or and if there's a structure on GitHub for doing that or if we've looked into that. That would be my only, like this looks great. My only, my only question is does does the does that option that exists in other kinds of environments also exist on GitHub? And I don't know the answer, and I don't know if anybody's looked. So at this point, the way that we're going to be releasing the translations mm -hmm. is via a PDF. So that's a just oh okay first things first. So we just needed right. to get the bulk translations done. Yep. We're still going to keep the English translations on kind of as the front on the web page. Okay. But when you, you download, we'll make the Chinese translations available via PDF, which we can okay. build pretty easily off of the structure, as well yeah. as the Spanish translations available. You, you, you could even put that in a, the readme for the English language file to download other language PDFs. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, down the road, it would be great if we had like a that drop down box that you're talking about that could just kind yeah. of convert on the fly, but yeah, or like a country flag or like I don't know, yeah. I haven't seen that on GitHub before, so I'm yeah. thinking they don't have it, but I didn't want to assume. All right, we're not even do we're not even doing it on the web page yet. Yeah, for certain, yeah, certainly mirroring like like mirroring the structure of the working groups as it's been standardized in the translations makes a ton of sense. Which is, I think, what's being suggested. I think I'm agreeing yes. with what was suggested. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you are correct. Hmm. And also, some images were being added. I think, yeah, she uh, yes. provided some images that didn't come across in the translations. As well. Yeah, so I did submit a pull request for the whole Chinese translations, and I added those images in there. So personally, I think this looks good. So thank you for doing this. And to, to, mer to merge this, I don't, I didn't see any problems with it. So any suggestions? Because I was hoping to do the same thing with that Spanish translations also. No, I mean no suggestions. I don't. I think what you're doing makes a ton of sense. So thank you. So from a working group perspective, should we have a link to translation somewhere in our readme? Is that what's going to happen now? I guess we could do that because uh, if you'll have noticed, I did put down an issue in the working groups to have a standard readme. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I guess we could put a link to the translations also. Oh yeah, I see that. I see this now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think if we're doing the translations, we may as well link them to the working groups that have been translated in somewhere on the readme.
I mean, that one who's a native Spanish or English or Chinese speaker doesn't come to, I mean, they don't get stuck. So with respect to releasing the translations, I know Shoya, you and King have been doing um, some work on this. So thank you very much for doing that. Are you comfortable with us doing a release of these metrics? Do you think we should continue to reflect on the metrics? Like, because I know that like Shoya, you had brought up, right? Some of the language just doesn't translate. <laughs> really, really well. Um, and the question would be, is, is, is it okay to, to do it? I have like, I cannot read Chinese. So I just don't know <laughs> what might be acceptable or what might completely just create confusion. So I, I really do have to lean on, on at least your thoughts. Uh, could we um, just uh, release Maybe I'll make it quick. Uh, I mean, I will review the metrics under evolution uh, folks area and uh, we could maybe release this first uh, recently. But um, it's just like the translated metrics are really, <laughs> really like machine translated a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so if a, if a native speaker <clears throat> um, who's fluent in both, like someone like you, Joya, um, read it, you might do some editing that would make it sound less like a machine, like it was put through Google Translate, <clears throat> and more like a Chinese person might interpret it. Yeah. Like someone who could um, read Chinese, unlike me. Yes, me and King, we are um, we are review we are reviewing those metrics, and um, so could could we um, release metrics under evolutions first? Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Of course. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course. So yes. if you uh, maybe you could post an issue in the repository that maybe just states that so we uh, just so we have some memory of this yes. in the repository that would be good yeah and i made a comment on on um josh's uh google doc that he shared in the issue just is the idea that we would just include a link in the readme or is the idea that this becomes a component of the structure of the repository that's what i'm still unclear on I would not propose restructuring the repository. No, right but now. like, like I'm saying, like, is the P could the PDF simply be linked and in the repository, or would the PDF be linked to the translations repo? Which I guess that would be just fine if it was a PDF in the translations repo. Um, That's my guess as to where it'll sit. All translations yeah. will exist in the translations repo. Okay. So, Joyo, I mean, what do you think is the best way to? Um, add the translations for the evolution repository? Should it be a link in the readme or um, what? Uh, maybe, yes, a link in the readme file mm -hmm. uh, in the evolution repository. Okay. So process-wise, here's what I propose that Shoya, you and King, I think it sounds like you're becoming comfortable with the evolution metrics as kind of being ready for release. So maybe just put that in an issue and tag um, like me and Sean and maybe Kevin who runs the webpage, K Lombard or yeah, K Lum, I think is what it is. And, um, and that would be great because then we can produce the PDF just, just based on the evolution for this round, which would be awesome. Um, and then Sean, you would know that that once Kevin is done, that that PDF is now available, that you could provide a link out of your evolution repo to that PDF. Okay. All right. I have a suggestion is, uh, uh, to, to ask the feedback of the people who find any uh, typo or, or uh, if they want to unpolish uh, the uh, documentation, just uh, give them a link uh, to fix uh, the 
the sentence uh, by just by sending a, a pull request. Mm -hmm. so, good idea. Yep. Question, where I can get this review link? What's that? Yeah, I just mentioned where I can get this review link for the Chinese version. I will, show, I will put it in the chat and in the minutes. Give me just a second. Great, thank you. Okay, do we have the same pro process uh, like the English version release. We have the almost uh, one month uh, review period, and uh, it, 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 I, I don't I, I don't ever uh, attend the release release uh, process. To uh, uh, do we have the tools to automatic to and uh, transparency release the PDF version? PDF PDF yeah. I think the PDF version could be released whenever you and Joya and the rest of the team reading it says it's good to release. Because I think for Kevin, it's it's not very hard to take the yeah. markdowns and put them into a PDF. Right, like it's a okay. task. It's not like a day of work. No. Okay. So we need a one month uh, period to review the Chinese, and uh, this time they can uh, issue and uh, uh, pre request the. Chinese repo, is that right? Yes, perfect. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and as, as soon as it's it, as soon as the translation exists in the translation site or the PDF, we can link it immediately with a pull request into the Evolution repository. Actually, on that Yash, I was looking at the Evolution folder in the Chinese translation. Looks like oh, yes. there are three, four. Do you see those those markdown files that are not? Um, I intentionally left them because I think the reviews accepted has been changed to change requests. That's true. So oh, okay, a little bit of work that needs to be done. Okay. And I had a look at the markdown files also of those, and I guess uh, we the markdown files still use the word reviews, hence I didn't classify them. Okay, I'll take away that. I thought we, I thought I actually thought we changed all that, but maybe we missed some. Mm, in the translated ones, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there was like a, there's always this parallel timing. Activity. Yeah. There's always this timing gap between the work that's being done <laughs> and the yeah. translations that are being done. It's, it's always right. hard to keep those things aligned. Yeah, I think Matt, you were the one that went through and did most of the review to change request changes. So, um, so it's probably you and Yash work, work, or you and the translation team working in parallel. Probably, I was making yeah. changes while they were translating making, on the old yeah. version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holding a plane in the sky. All right. I had another thing to discuss. Like, I noticed that the translation report doesn't have a readme tag. A good one, I guess. Yeah, I guess you. I see a readme, but it is not a clear, clearly stated readme. It would be good if there was a reverse link. So, for each working group that you translate, um, it'd be great if the readme included a link to the translation for that working group. So, maybe a heading in the readme for each of the working groups that you've translated along with the um, Chinese and Spanish translations of those working groups. That way you've got it. I mean, it's, it's so easy to do and that way you, however somebody stumbles upon us, they can find it. Um, and they all, they both all link to the same translation document. And the the translations repository, I guess I could draft the structure yeah. The you, structure for the read -me. Yeah, like the readme is pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's like two, I mean, two sentences. It's not I, very I, good. <laughs> I mean, I think the structure could simply be: here are the five working groups we've translated, and here's the English translation. I'm sorry, this the English translation, the Spanish translation, and the Chinese translation for each of them. Um, or here's a link to the English repo. 
Um, that's been translated. Um, and yeah, yeah you know, if, if you, you want to go ahead, Sean. And, if, and then you could even say something in the readme, like if you find a translation error or something that you think could be more clear, feel free to issue a pull request into this translations repo. Um, Great. Sounds good. Thanks, Yash. So I guess I'll start working on uh, like the yeah. graph structure. Yeah. Can you can't you can't go wrong. There's nothing yeah. to change. <laughs> yeah. There's not much. <laughs> you can't screw it up. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, question, if I found some errors or typos on this review, I mean the Chinese translation review, can I set up the uh, pull request directly? Or do, yes. I, do I have to? Yep, oh, yes. Okay, great. And in fact, when you, if you can, let me put something in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. So on that pull request, if you can tag this. Oh, okay, okay. Chaos, I'll be able way, to that. Yeah. I think some people will receive this notification. Yeah, you know, I think King and Shoya are the <laughs> the people that yeah. do, do the reviews. So great, great, that's great. Uh, also, could we uh, put it as one of the tasks at the Google uh, Google Summer Program? I don't know. The help with translations. Yeah, certainly. I mean that that could be a possibility for the program. That we're talking about so because I, I know some people and um, they have some uh, actually they very good at English no matter reading or, or, or oral English so we can we can let those students help us to improve this translation works cool. all right thank you we are at the end of our time Oh, so, yeah. so um, would, does uh, May 15th possibly work as a, another hack, hackathon day for Asia Pacific? I think we talked about that last time, but we can communicate about that offline too. I have my WeChat up. I'll, I'll message Willem. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I have to scan my phone oh, apparently. Oh, All right. right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I for, uh, sorry, I, I forgot one thing. Uh, next uh, Asia Pacific uh, meeting, we have the long day vacation, you, you know. We have the five, five days vacation. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, William. So, 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 you know, the five, five, May 5th, we are all in vacation that day. Yeah. Well, should we, should we, public holiday. <laughs> should we skip the whole meeting then, or? Probably or, if our yeah. Chinese colleagues are yeah. on the call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, I mean, do we want to have an extra meeting on the following week, or do we just want to let it I think go? We just let it go and just pick okay. it up when we come back. Yeah, this works for me. It's May in the U.S., so this is the time of year where the semesters end, and why is it We try to we try to go outside before it gets too yeah. hot. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 B